Hey everyone, it's Diane here from Deco Easy. Jen and I have a new video for you. We're going to show you something new creative today. If you like what you see in this video, please consider subscribing to our channel. Hit the bell button so we can send you a new notification when we upload a video. And please, we also like if you give this video a big thumbs up. Let's start crafting! So here you see what I will use for this DIY and again I'm totally into the wood the last couple of DIYs so again I am using some scrap wood pieces of an old palette maybe you have some uh, uh, something around uh, your home also so go check out and use it for a nice uh, decor piece this time I'm going to use it for not a barn door not an old window but I'm going to use it for an old tray so I'm going to try to make an old tray uh, from this scrap wood first what I'm going to do right now is just to make the little pieces a little bit more smooth but because you see already it is not totally smooth so I am going to do this first and I always use this um, yeah here we call it here we call it a fell I don't really call, know how you call it in English but at least you know what I mean I just want to smooth everything up so everything is feeling a little bit better so here you see I have my five pieces uh, sanded and of course you see already they are not totally perfect and that's uh, exactly the way that I want to have it because I don't want to uh, have a perfect uh, tray or else I can buy it in a shop but I want to make sure that it's a little bit of the rustic and a little bit of the yeah do you call it a little bit of the raw side so just uh, not to have it really perfect I'm going to glue these five pieces together so for this uh, time I'm going to try to use my glue gun and then because I'm going to nail it afterwards so it doesn't have to stay for a long time but only for a couple of times that, <laughs> that I have the time to nail it together so I'm just gluing it together so I hope that I can stick it this way as long as I get the <laughs> I get the nails on the back side so I'm going to do the rest and then I show you how it's looking like so you see already we have the under uh, piece for our tray and what I'm going to do right now I'm just going to turn it around and take two pieces I will use to nail this together because or else I am a little bit afraid that he will break because um, the glue from your glue gun is not always the greatest so I'm going to nail this together just with some simple um, nails and of course we are just going to nail it and I hope this will work and I don't <laughs> I don't so I will do it out of camera because or else you get a headache only from the nails <laughs> so you see this is how he is looking like I have the two uh, bottom pieces uh, to each other so I know for sure that my uh, tray is not falling apart what I'm going to do uh, later on first I'm going when we're going to paint it or and wax it of course I will do some little um, filled uh, under it so it won't scratch my table but first we're going to turn it around and just make some side pieces and I'm going to do it in a different way than normally you have a handle or you can do use doorknobs or something else but I'm going to do this on the sides of it and I'm gluing this together and later on I'm going to do the half of this one I'm also doing uh, in between over here so it is a very easy and simple uh, DIY and you can everyone can make it so I will glue this uh, one together just with some easy uh, glue from my glue gun of course you can use I think a lot of you use E6000 or and we have of course here also our own brand of glue but this time I'm going to try if also my glue gun is will fit okay so I'm going to do this on the sides and just take it together because of course the handles uh, that doesn't hang a weight on it so it can be just glued together 
and I'm going to use this one and I'm gluing it together of course when I'm not gluing myself together, <laughs> together everything will go okay but you see this is always crafting with, <laughs> with some amateur like me so you see already a lot of things could go different or <laughs> get done different but the only thing I'm always trying to uh, show you is that you can do anything you uh, you like if you just try and it doesn't have to be always have to be perfect because like I said I'm also an amateur and I'm also doing this just for fun and I'm just hope you like what you see so this one is already finished and now what I'm going to do right now I'm just going to cut this one in half and use it as a middle piece over here so you see already I cut the last piece in two and I measured out a little bit where the middle will be so I'm going to glue this uh, of course on top of my side of my tray and of course I hope that everything will stick together but you can use uh, wood glue or something else just do what you think it's uh, fitting and I'm a little bit over here so I'm going to glue this on top of here and I'm going to glue the other one also and I use a little bit more glue than normally so to keep it uh, at the same place and of course I'm just going to mess it out because I already set already little uh, uh, stripes with some pencil of course so I know a little bit <laughs> where the middle will be because or else <laughs> we have two different handles so this is um, now on top of it what I'm going to do right now is just make uh, in the middle I just make a square in the black color before we stain it so I'm going to make a black uh, square in the middle so I will measure it out and then I show you what I'm going to do so you see already I made a square inside of my tray and I'm going to uh, give this uh, inside a black color but if you like gray more, if you like white more just do whatever you think is right because uh, uh, black is fitting more for my decor I think a lot of you who are already here for a long time know I am totally into a little bit of the black and uh, wood color so I'm going to paint it black but be free and do whatever you like and what's fitting for your decor so I'm going to because I have to do it a little bit careful so I'm going to paint the inside black so this will take a while so <laughs> I will do this out of camera and then I show you the result so you see I painted my square in the middle and what I'm going to do right now let it dry for a little while and then I'm going to do the other wood pieces I am going to put them in the antique uh, furniture wax and of course you can also with a square you can do it any color anything you like you can stain it in any color maybe in the gray color in any color you like I'm going to uh, do it in the antique wax color so I'm going to wait for a, a moment then he is dry and then I show you how he is changing only with some a little furniture wax on top of it he will change um, I always say by the minute but he really, <laughs> he really does change by the minute so but we let it dry first so you see he's almost dry but I can't wait <laughs> to show you how he will change with a little a piece of furniture wax you see he is changing uh, in a, such a nice color if you just uh, give it a little piece of your wax and I'm going to do show you also a little piece on the top or else it does, it does take much too long for you so I am just wanted to show you how it will change just with some furniture wax you see already he is getting such a rustic uh, color and what I like the most on this tray is because uh, it is not perfect really the, the sides are not perfect everything is a little bit more uh, old and rustic so I like that uh, a lot I didn't thought I would like it this much but I really do like it this much I will put it in totally in the furniture wax and then we are going to start on our middle but first uh, I'm going to wax it and then I show you how he really is changed 
So you see how uh, my tray at the moment is looking like. I am really loving already the rustic feeling and I did by hand my, of course I could have taped him off but uh, for me then you get the really straight lines and that was not the look I was going for. I want to have a little bit uh, with uh, some little folds. I don't know if that, may, <laughs> if that makes sense to you but I didn't want it to have it uh, really perfect line so I want to, did it out of hand. Uh, what I did on my computer already, you know, I made my own signs and I made two pieces uh, win, uh, with uh, one with the green one and one with the gray one and I am going to decide which one I'm going to use in my tray because and uh, what I'm going to uh, mud potch it on top of it, I'm going to try to squeeze it uh, so hard that you uh, can get the uh, the structure of your wood you get inside of your print so it means uh, it looks a little bit more like you painted it so I'm going to try to squeeze uh, squeeze it a little bit hard uh, on top of it so it looks a little bit better but we were going to see I think I'm going to use the green color because I love that also but the gray is also fine too so I did two pieces so you can see a little bit of the difference so I'm going to cut this one out and then we're going to mop parts it on top of it so you see, this is how he is uh, printed out, uh, and of course I'm going to mod podge it now on top of my um, board. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to mod podge my board and not the other way around. I did little marks uh, on my board that I can keep it a little bit inside of my board because I don't want to have everything uh, in the mod podge. <laughs> so I'm going to try to keep it a little bit inside of it. So this will be a little bit a hard, yeah it's not a hard task but you have to be a little bit care, more careful that you don't do it completely out of your board because I think I, when I do it on top of my picture that it would have been, um, um, I think on my tray would not look that great uh, with all the mud parts on top of it. So, but. We will see if I am right or not. Maybe I am totally wrong. So, I don't know. We will see. I am not really a great artist with the mud podge. So, we are going to see how this is going to work or not. And of course, I am doing also the in between the gaps inside of the wood. So, I am going to try to get the paper on top of it. But maybe it doesn't work and I still have to paint all the board. But just like I said, I'm going to try to work my way a little bit. So it's going to look a little bit like it is painting on it. I don't know if I will succeed or not, maybe not. First I'm going to try to get the wood lines inside of it and of course I have to do it a little bit more out of here and of course have to work our way this way. I'm sorry this uh, probably is a little bit boring for you I understand that completely, so if you just skip forward, I understand. And maybe this is one VS code <laughs> that it doesn't work totally, So, but we will see. I still think I need to mud podge everything, but, but for me it's very important that it got the old look and there has to be uh, there has to be a wrinkle or else it doesn't have to have an old look so a little bit of wrinkles it doesn't matter that's right up my alley because I <laughs> never get my mud podge straight on it and of course someone told me you have to uh, use a little plastic on top of here and then squeeze it out but most of the time I'm not that patient to do so I'm letting this dry for the, I do the second coat. 
So here you see when my Mod Podge is dried up, but uh, I have to. I did something more. Uh, maybe you see it already. I did in the picture frame because you see here the panels of my wood, and because I, the picture it was just uh, totally over it and it uh, was not working for me. So what I did with some uh, thumbnail, I just uh, made a line. Uh, and cut the little picture through so it it has a little line over it so it gives a little bit more of the old feeling and a little bit more that the picture is just um, painted on top of my um, tray so you just oh you also can you <laughs> you can also use a knife of course I did it with my thumbnails but you have to wait until your mud parts is dry or else your or your total picture will be uh, damaged so just wait till it is dry just make with your thumbnail or with a knife the lines of the panels of your wood to give it a little bit to cut it uh, through and then mud parts it again and then let it dry so I did that. Um, Yesterday, what I'm going to do right now, I want to distress it a little bit more and I'm going to start with the black color. So I'm going to try to distress the whole tray a little bit better and then we're going to use the white one, but first the black one. So I just take a little bit of the school board paint and of course I am just dabbing the most of it off because I don't want to distress it um, that bad. Just a couple of touches. Uh, in between especially in between the little cuts of my board to give it a little bit more and of course if it is a little bit too much you can also uh, wipe it away that's easy with this kind of and a little bit in the sides so always where you think the and just the pieces where you normally will get your tray so and a little bit of course at the end over here you can work a little bit over the picture so yeah, for me if there is no rhyme or reason like I always say I'm just going to try something <laughs> I always hope, <laughs> hope that it works <laughs> most of the time it does but I think there are mo <laughs> maybe watchers who think it doesn't work <laughs> <laughs> and they can do it maybe a little bit better than I am but it doesn't matter I have fun in it so so you see a little bit of what I mean you give it already a little bit more of an old uh, look and I'm going to do of course the sides and the other piece but that takes a little bit too long for you so I'm finished the black off and then I'm going to do the white so what I'm going to do right now, you just see already, this is uh, with the black color already and I also did a little bit on top of the picture because little uh, pieces also in the uh, sides of the panels. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm just going to do use the white color. I only use the white from the lid, but I didn't uh, clean up my brush because I want not totally the white, a little bit of the gray. So <clears throat> I'm just working a little bit with the white so it give it a little bit more of an yeah creamy with a grayer co color just not the what except the white so I'm just going to do some little pieces also again inside of the the little panels and of course you can do it any way you want if you want to have more or more white or uh, you can do anything you like and if it is a little bit too much, just work it away a little bit like I do and you just get a little uh, touch of the white, not a lot. So you have to work a little bit with your fingers also. So just work it away and just dab it a little bit, just how it's fitting for you. And of course, if you don't like this at all, just don't do it. Uh, I, I'm always, I'm not always uh, distressing and it, uh, everything, so because it's not always my favorite, but in this way I really love how it turned out. So I'm going to do the rest, and then I show you how the tray is looking like, and then we're going to decorate it. So this is how the tray is uh, looking like right now and of course I also did a little bit too much white on it and I wiped it away so it's very easy if you use chalk paint you can always remove everything you uh, think it's a little bit too much. Um, 
Of course, I thought about you can also use it as a sign, of course, <laughs> of course. But I'm going to try to make a little display out of it because it does need a lot because it's a very uh, nice tray on its own. So you don't have to decorate it with a lot of things. So I do a couple of things on it and then I show you what I will, uh, how it turned out. <laughs> so here you see how I decorated my little tray we just made. And I did some lamp on top of it. It's just a lamp on batteries. And I did some greenery inside of it and some uh, white berries and also white berries at the sides. A little rooster I also bought for uh, years ago. He has been already in so many colors. But this time he is in the black, white and a little bit gray. You see here the beaded garland and he is also original. For, he is gold color. Uh, more of the glam side and I painted them uh, gray. Of course my little reed I did some uh, piece of ribbon on, uh, on top of it of uh, around it. This, <laughs> that's a better word around it. <laughs> you see here my two little birds I also bought years ago and I distressed them a little bit with the uh, bl uh, black color and you see here you still can read a little bit of the words you have in your tray and I'm going a little bit backwards so you can see a little bit more of an overview and I am really happy how our, our easy tray uh, turned out and you just saw me make it, how easy it was, just an amateur like me so I hope you have some wood in your garage or in your, <laughs> your attic, it doesn't matter grab the wood and just make a little tray on your own and you will see how easy it is to make one of your own and I am really happy with mine so I just hope you enjoyed watching Hey, it's Diane here with a new DIY. Diane from Deco Easy. Um, I have this huge pile of wood, which I used for a uh, long time ago for a Valentine's DIY, but I want to redecorate it again. Uh, I want to make a huge strawberry out of it. I think, yeah, this is how it's going to look. Um, but I need a power saw for this job. So I'm going to take the measurements of the reed upon my front door because that is where I want this to have. Um, then I'm going to print out a, a strawberry figure, draw the lines around, then I go to Jenny's place because she has a power saw which I can borrow, and then I'm going to sew out the design. So, let's go to the outdoor wreath. I will show you but I can't talk, so you will only see a wreath without, without any decoration. Okay, this is Photoshop. This is an image of a strawberry, an easy one. Hopefully I'm able to cut this out in the right measurement. I'm going to print it. I'll have to print it on two separate uh, papers because the image is way too large. I'm going to use this as a mold to draw around. So, this is, this is the strawberry, actually two separate strawberries cut in half. I'm going to cut this out and then I have a mold. Maybe I think now I have the guideline. This was, by the way, the largest image I could print. Now I have a guideline. Oh, I can also make it just a little bit bigger because now I know how to cut. That isn't uh, really hard. But if you ask me to do it without any example, just like this, draw a strawberry, then really it's a failure. So, yeah. No, I know myself. This, uh, this was a way, little bit smarter for me to do, having just a guideline how to cut and how to draw. Look, now I have one big strawberry. Um, this one is a little bit smaller than the one I had in mind, so I'm going to draw a bigger uh, silhouette round. I'm using this flower pot from Ikea um, as an heavy object, so the paper won't move uh, accidentally, because as I said, I know myself, I'm really uh, when I get nervous because I'm doing this for the first time. So, now it has to be okay. 
Uh, I think I'm just going to use a pencil, maybe a white marker if that doesn't work, but we'll see how it turns out. I hope out. you can see it clear on camera, but I can see it at least here in real life. My strawberry here, just slightly bigger than the image you can see here. I just placed it in the center like this, and I drew a line around. Okay, now I'm heading off to Jenny's place to saw this whole thing out. Actually, I'm a little bit afraid that this line isn't visible anymore when you go outside. So I'm using this, what is it, actually a paint marker in red, because I'm going to paint this thing red. Um, maybe I also have a green one. I don't know, hopefully I have that, because then I can draw around the top section. No, I don't have blue, pink, I bet there wasn't any green available at the store. Doesn't mind, I'm just going to use red, that's a nice contrasting color. I'm just going to shake it. Jenny has these markers. Um, I'm going to use them for the first time, so in the next shot I will show you how it turned out. Okay, the strawberry is done completely with the marker now, and now it's time to go to the giant. Okay, here is my strawberry, sewed out with the power saw from Jenny. Um, but actually, now I took a look at this, I see that this is the bad side of the wood, because there was something glued on here, I believe it was a wreath, and I can't get these chips off. Um, so I wanted to turn it around. Here is a little bit of damage from Mod Podge and stuff, so I have to draw everything over again. That's no problem, I also want to paint everything black, so that's what I'm going to do now. Time to paint a strawberry. I have my red paint here. Uh, I made my own red color by using these two acrylic paints, because this one is too light, so just added a little bit of black. Then you get this really ruby color, perfect for strawberry painting. Um, I just used acrylic paint and now I realize that I need an extra blanket because my strawberry is way too small or too large for my cutting board. Okay, here we go. Let's get the paint. And that's the last part, I want to do the edges here. First I just start painting the strawberry. You can start here. Yeah, I know I used a little bit too much paint on my brush because you used the brush to stir, and that was probably a bad idea. And now as I'm seeing it, I think this one needs multiple layers of paint. Just continue like this. This strawberry is now completely red. I believe it took me five or six layers to create this color. Now I want to make some green paint because I was in my storage room. This is the only green paint that I have that is more like olive green. Uh, I don't know if that is a match, but I can also try to make some green paint myself with this yellow and blue one. So yeah, I'm going to try what fixes best and uh, fits best and then I'm going to apply that paint upon the strawberry. I'm done with mixing the green paint, now it is time to put that upon the wood of the strawberry, the black part. Oh, it looks amazing. Yeah, this is way better than what I had in mind. First I thought I'm going to use the pre-mixed paint. But I'm glad that I didn't do that. This one is better than I expected. Okay, carefully make an edge here. I'm using a small brush now. I do have a bigger one. That's for later use. Also not suitable for painting the edges here. This one, you know, Let's paint in a little bit of an uglier way than the large brush here does. So I'm only using this one for edges. I think this is more for watercolor painting than for acrylic paint. But they were really cheap, so it also might be that the quality just isn't completely what I had in mind. And the bigger brush was more expensive, so just going to continu continue this way. So there is paint everywhere, and we have really nice leaves here on the strawberry. Now you're going to see the difference between the small and this, the larger brush. Look, 
no spots here. Oh, loud motorcycle outside. No spots here when applying the paint. Everything is spread evenly. This is just better for using with, with acrylic paint or chalk paint. I use these a lot more than I do with the small ones. And it just looks way more beautiful than when you're applying it with this brush than when you use the small one. It also goes a little bit faster than with the small one. But the small one is just simply better for making, you know, small lines, curves, tiny spaces where you gotta paint. So pick your brush wisely, it can really make a difference. The green part of the strawberry is done too. Now I only want to make little yellow spots with this paint here and the brush. Okay, here we go. Just take a little bit of yellow paint. I think I need to do this twice. Yeah, really need to do this twice. Look how cute this thing turned out. I'm really happy with the final result. I am so super happy with this huge strawberry made out of wood painted by myself. And Jenny sorted out for me with her power saw. Time to put it on the front of the wreath. And I also want to add a little bit of really cute AliExpress ribbon. This is a ribbon that I bought from AliExpress. I don't really don't know how much I paid for it because I ordered it months ago. But it looks so cute. Uh, it's really strong, made out of soft fabric. It has a little satin look. I'm going to put this upon my outdoor wreath on the front door. There is one thing I forgot to say. Before placing the strawberry outdoors, I'm using this clear spray paint, which is also, oh, sorry, my phone, also outdoor and indoor proof. So it seals the acrylic paint inside. I'm going to spray paint the whole strawberry back and front with this. Also, don't forget the sides and let it dry. Now you have a perfect outdoor uh, resistant artwork. This is the last that I want to put into the wreath, artificial strawberry berries branches from AliExpress. So that was it for today. Jenny and I are so happy that you made it to the end. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed our video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe, give the video a big like, and Jenny and I hope to see you back again in our next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye, everyone.